I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to Southwest Magazine. My guests today are accomplished artists Heather Down and John Fraser, as well as new residents to St. Andrews. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for having us on the show. I'm sure that you've met a lot of locals already, but we're curious to find out what drew you to St. Andrews from Ontario and, and when did you get here and, and what was the interest in moving? I'm going to let you answer that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, actually, it was your station, CHCO, that brought us to St. Andrews specifically. Um, I was writing a book with a friend of mine, Catherine Kenwell, in Barrie, where we're from, and it, um, we had to pivot. I had to pivot. I own a publishing company that catered to schools, and all of a sudden, schools were not open, so my business was not relevant. So a friend of mine, Catherine, and I wrote a book called Not Cancelled, Canadian Kindness in the Face of COVID-19, and it features 49 stories from across all 10 provinces of kindness during the first lockdown. And in doing so, I had to find stories and people to interview from every single province. And interestingly enough, I had a difficult time finding something from New Brunswick. I have later found out the reason is not that New Brunswickers are not kind, it's that New Brunswickers don't brag about it. So it was a difficult thing to kind of unearth, but in looking for it, I found a little clip on social media, and I think it was your station, that was talking about two people dressed up as clowns walking down the, the main street trying to cheer people up, and I thought, what an interesting place. Um, so I researched it, never did find out who the clowns are, so if anybody out there knows, I'd love to meet them. Brenda and Jonathan Logan. <laughs> okay, so they're the, they're the people to blame for us moving to your province. <laughs> um, and just, it, it fascinated me, we were looking to open a shop, and this seemed like a great place after we researched it. And that's how we end up deciding to move here, and we moved here this March. I will hold up the book for everyone at home to see. Where can you buy it? Um, anywhere. It's in Indigo, Chapters, Kohl's, some independents carry it, Amazon, online, and we will have it on our shop as well. <laughs> I was actually introduced to you, Heather, from seeing you on Lisa LaFlemme's program on CTV talking about this book, so it's neat to meet in person finally. Oh, yes. I'm really pleased to, to be able to chat with you, so thank you. And your store, we're already seeing it in town. Mm -hmm. I believe the opening is next week. Week? Um, Mid-May? Ma May 19th, May 19th, just before the uh, holiday weekend. So Cold so. Jack Cafe, tell me a little bit about what it is and what's the concept behind it. Well, originally, in, back in, in London, I started a band called Cold Jack. And down the line, uh, it was one of my dreams to have a, like a Cold Jack Cafe. Originally, it was going to be a music venue for comedy and music and the store. But uh, baby steps first, right? So, so I wanted to open a British store. I'm bringing in all the authentic imported uh, food, along with some uh, vintage uh, decorations that people would love. Like I've got teapots hanging from the ceiling. I've got a 1967 BSA motorcycle. So um, I just thought this was a fantastic place to, to bring the cafe, actually. Uh, it's a loyalist area, and there's so many Brits here as well. And it was funny, Vicky, prior to coming, to St. Andrews, I was getting orders uh, f through email saying, have you got this, have you got that? And obviously I was saying, yes, I will. So this, uh, this town has given us a great opportunity to actually bring this to the forefront. So I'm pretty excited about doing it. And I'm a bubbly person anyway. So even if you don't want to buy anything, just come in for a chin whack and um, see what the store's like. And uh, hopefully you'll love the goodies that we're selling. Now, it's named after one of your bands, one of your That's musical right. projects. Can you speak to me a little bit about that? What's your musical background and where uh, might people know you from? Actually, I mean, I used to pl play piano and uh, trumpet when I was a kid. My dad was a professional drummer, so it's in my blood. Um, I've got a famous second cousin as well, Jaws Holland of um, Squeeze and the Jaws Holland show of BBC. So he's my dad's side. So there is, uh, there is a lot of sort of music in our blood anyway. So Cold Jack was a band that I formed with Dean Chandler and Gary Wilson back in London. And we were playing like places like the Marquee and the famous Rock Garden before it closed. Uh, and then um, in 2010, now I've been here 21 years, but in 2010 I started the Cold Jack band again. And uh, that was pretty successful, but my lucky break came when I signed with Eddie Bullen's Thunderdome Sounds and Eddie's work with David Foster of Wind and Fire and many greats and he's a phenomenal musician so we clicked straight away and I met him at a festival funny enough and uh, 
So the rest was history really, it was starting Cold Jack again and it's been successful and uh, Cold Jack's music's been played all around the world on radio, FM and internet. So uh, I feel pretty blessed that I've had that success so far and it's still growing. So yeah, I'm pleased. We are going to play some of your music at the end of today's show. So Thank stick you stick around for that at the very end, but how would you describe your sound to people who might know you? What type of music do you play? Well, it's funny, under my under the label that I was signed, it was smooth jazz, but we're more of a R and B soul. There's a combination, it's like fusion, there's a bit of funk in there. So we're, someone said that we sound like the new Steely Dan. Uh, I'm a big fan of Level 42. I have been since the 80s and I've had the pleasure of actually uh, communicating with Mark King and Mike Lindop and I actually took two of their songs. Uh, I sent it back to them and they said they were really pleased with the production and that's on uh, one of the albums, actually the album I just gave you called Seven. Um, that's, there's a couple of tracks on there. Um, so it's a, uh, when you come to our shows, it's very upbeat and I mean, if you're not dancing, it'd be disappointing. <laughs> so um, yeah, the music's, the music, uh, a lot of my music tells stories. You know, I like to write about things that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, uh, recently I just wrote Free the Children, uh, that's been sitting on the shelf for uh, three years and I thought it was time to, to bring it to the forefront, there's a lot of things happening out there, the world's a bit crazy right now and I believe this song sort of represents what's happening to some of the children out there so mm -hmm. I'm quite proud of that song and uh, I hope it does well and a lot of radio stations want to pick it up mm -hmm. and take it. So yeah. You are playing a concert at the Imperial Theatre in about a year's time? Yeah, I was lucky enough to get a book in at the Imperial on October 14th, 2022. Hopefully COVID um, is over by then and we can bring the band over from Ontario. Uh, we're an eight piece band, but mm -hmm. the actual band is The Englishman, it's a new project. And uh, bass player Brendan Rothwell, who's English, he's from Calgary. Aaron Spinks uh, is the drummer, he's the actual Coljack drummer. He's from Ajax and um, he's got a British background. So The Englishman is three international radio musicians combining all their music together. So it'd be Coljack's music, my solo album music and uh, Brandon Rothwell's albums. And we're gonna play some of those tracks live at the Imperial. And I'm lucky enough to have a sellout show with my friend James Mullinger at Dunham's Run. Uh, that was sold out and really blessed to see the tickets went there. So look, and I've got a few other shows to be announced uh, actually in St. Andrews. Hopefully I'll be working with uh, Pooja yep. at the Algonquin Inn and uh, Brad Henderson has, uh, you know, got some ideas for me too. And we might be uh, possibly considered for July 1st. We're not sure yet, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's cool. You both obviously seem to know a lot of people right away. What has your experience been like, Heather, of this community and, and moving here also <laughs> in the winter, I guess? Yes. Well, the Brussels sprouts. I, yeah. The Brussels sprouts. We, we <laughs> went straight into quarantine. And we, I've never been to this particular town before in my life. And I had pretty strong roots in Barrie. I had great friends and great family. I've got kids and grandkids there. So to just up and leave in the middle of a pandemic, open a business, it, you know, sell everything you own. I mean, that seemed like a good idea at the time, but upon arrival, you have this moment of, oh, what have I done? So, you know, being in isolation, it was kind of uh, tough the first few days just because I didn't know anyone, I was missing my friends. But then I had a turning point that was just so wonderful and, and simple, but wonderful. Um, it was Holly Johnson brought me a unsweetened soy green tea latte <laughs> from Honey Beans. And I think this was the beginning of week two in quarantine. And I didn't think anybody could make a green tea latte as good as my local barista. <laughs> it was better. And it was at that moment I realized that, you know what, I will find things that I love here. And, and the people have been wonderful, almost mm. disarmingly pleasant. It's just, it's great. Very supportive and warm. Yeah. Actually, we, I feel, uh, personally, I, I feel like I've been here forever. And I, and I know you're sort of starting to settle in too, right? And feel more comfortable with everything. Yeah, it really helped being out of quarantine, of course. That's, that's kind yeah. of a, 
a, a unique way to go to a new place that you've never seen or don't know anybody to go straight into quarantine for two weeks. Mm -hmm. It leaves you too much time in your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I feel that because the people have been so warm and supportive, um, that's made, made it easier for mm -hmm. us to settle. And, and we can't thank everybody enough for that. And everybody that's out there that knows us, we, we want to thank you for, for bringing us home, as they say. But you've got to tell the story about the, the Brussels part. Oh, <laughs> right. So we didn't yeah. know how we were going to get groceries, but your Kiwanis Club had a great service of delivering from yeah. Joey's Independent. Great people. Great people. It was so appreciative. So I went online and I ordered and I just pre pressed Brussels sprouts, not realizing that I, maybe I should have been more specific. Anyway, <laughs> our, our order came and I was expecting like a bunch of Brussels sprouts and we got three. And I'm like, that's not going to fill us up for supper. I should have been no. more specific. We had to chop them up and make them last three weeks. Right? So. <laughs> so. But then another friend of ours saw the post on Facebook and uh, the next day there were three little Brussels sprouts, ah. additional Brussels sprouts left in our doorstep. Oh, Felicity. Yes. <laughs> she's fun. Well, being a Brit, you know, she's she's uh, crazy. So crazy people have lady been fantastic. Too. Lovely, though. Well, I always say if you can make it through one winter here, you're immediately a local. So it looks like you've already done that. Hopefully, yes. And it, <laughs> it does help when the sun is out. And I love the trail system, the Van Horn Trail. Um, I'm a runner always looking for people to run with. That's my next big goal is to find some a running partner. But you know, that those sort of things help because they remind you of the things that you did where you lived mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that and the, the generosity and the general um, acceptance and diversity of people here has really been wonderful. Yeah, and that's another another thing I love, uh, what we both love is that everybody's willing to try and to accept new ideas. I mean, we've got plenty of ideas, as you know, Vicky, and uh, hopefully some of them uh, come off and we want to expand the Cold Jack Cafe into other adventures. And, uh, and we feel like we can do that here because people, um, I mean, we've got to respect the, the beautiful history of this town, um, but I'm hoping that the locals will embrace some of the ideas and go along with it to, to sort of uh, expand what we're doing and, and expand what the town's going to be doing too in the near future. So uh, sounds exciting. Me, yeah. for myself from moving here, it's one of the most welcoming places and it is beautiful how excited people are about mm. a new idea. But not knowing that and coming to New Brunswick, what, what made you pick here as a province out of anywhere else that you could have moved? Well, I besides the news story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, besides the news story. Well, um, in the 80s, I actually had a brother who lived in St. John for, I think, six years. So I'm not unfamiliar with the East. My parents are both from Newfoundland. As a kid, we used to go there. We used to drive. So at that point, New Brunswick is almost like the drive through. Um, we would go to Moncton. Um, what is the hill where you think you're going? Magnetic, Magnetic hill. hill. We would always stop there. We would always go on the covered bridge at Heartland. So that was kind of, I always thought it was a beautiful, gentle looking province, but I didn't have a lot of roots here, um, but knew the East. You know, we had gone multiple times throughout my life. I've, I've flown to Moncton many mm -hmm. times. I've, you know, sometimes when my parents were older, they would still be driving home after their summer in Newfoundland. So I would maybe fly to Moncton to help them drive. I would literally fly from Toronto, Moncton, get in the car and they would pick me up and I'd help drive the rest of the way home, that type of thing. So it, well, I wasn't unfamiliar, but it was actually about 10 years ago, we were looking at a little property online and Deer Island. And John said, this is such an interesting place. It's close to Maine and blah, blah, blah. And then when I saw that CHCO thing in St. Andrews, I clicked with that house that we had looked at 10 years ago online, that Very that close. was the same place. So it was like a reoccurring theme. Also, I think we were looking for a place that was smaller. Barry has really grown. Um, the other aspect too is, you know, we're near the end of our careers. We had a large house that we didn't need anymore. The market was amazing there. Um, and I know it's booming here too, but it's a different market. It seemed to make some financial s uh, sense as well. So it was not only a heart move, it was a head move, you know, mm -hmm. like where mm -hmm. would be, we did a lot of research, where would be a good place to set up this type of business? Where would we have traffic in the summer? Um, you know, where would our house dollar 
be, you know, go far. All those things came into play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then when we get here and find all these wonderful people, that's like a bonus. Well, it is about, <laughs> and being so close to Maine, like I said, with the support that I've got for my music, it made, you know, made sense for me where I can just pop over there and yeah. do some shows. And um, so, but not just that, New, New Brunswick is an absolutely beautiful province. It's beautiful. And they're doing a really good job now of the advertising yeah. to bring people here. And there is an exodus from Ontario. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and I've been a bit of an ambassador and I just keep posting everything. Right? And all my friends <laughs> are like, wow, where's this? And not realizing how gorgeous it is here. And I think they're quite jealous of the pictures actually that are going back. So, and I think, I think a lot of people are going to start to really think about this province and I can see a boom here mm -hmm. and it's happening I, yeah. I it really is happening I just wish my mum and dad were here too um, I love my mum and dad dearly and they're in Canterbury in England and uh, they would have loved I mean my dad loves ships and boats and he's a musician so um, my mum and dad would have loved this province and I could see them settling in you know and it's a shame but we're, we're in contact but that's that's life right mm -hmm. we make these decisions but I can honestly say and we both have said this province is just just fantastic the countryside the only thing i can't get used to is the gridlock that you have on the highways <laughs> uh, i mean i mean you go on the motorways or the highways as we say oh it's busy it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> no but it's it opened our eyes we can stop laughing yeah yeah because that it's the, not just the highways are pretty you know well well sort of put together and everything mm -hmm. and they look gorgeous not to see hardly any cars is just unusual for mm -hmm. us because 401, Vicky, as you know, and the 400, it's just bumper to bumper. Yep. So, and I have a laugh sometimes and say, oh, I can't stand this. There's two cars on this highway and this is going to be a tough drive. I think you're right, too. I think there used to be the drive through province. I think it'll be the drive, too, yes. after this mm -hmm. pandemic. And especially, when, like you're saying, as an artist, you can be in Bangor in two hours and yeah. Montreal in under eight in normal non, non-pandemic times without border situations. Are you okay. finding as artists the pandemic in general? Is there some silver lining? Heather, you obviously created a book based on the pandemic already. How did you pivot so quickly? Um, necessity, I think, you know, all of a sudden that was our main income and it was gone overnight and before CERB was announced, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So truly necessity is the, the mother of invention. But there have been some silver linings because, we, you know, people are reevaluating. They're realizing, hey, I really can work from home in some cases where people were commuting long distances. Um, they're, they're looking at you know, the things that they can do that they always wanted to do and it's kind of the push they needed to get that done. Yeah. Um, so there are silver linings. I mean, it, it has been a, a terrible thing and there have been terrible losses, especially where we were. Uh, almost an entire long-term care facility was, was wiped out by the pandemic. Our neighbor lost her father. It, it, I mean, it, there are terrible things to it, but like anything, right? Anything terrible, it's almost like it's fertilizer for the seeds of something new. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I do see some silver linings. Are you working on any projects locally at this point? Oh, I'd love to. I've got lots of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but um, right now, Catherine and I are again doing a second edition of the Not Cancelled book that will come out this fall. Um, so we are, I don't think we have our New Brunswick story yet. So if anyone local wants to submit, I, I would love to hear oh, from I'm you. Sure there's one <laughs> oh, there's many, I'm sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, just a story about kindness, a first person account about something kind that happened during this pandemic. And we're, we're entertaining that now. So I hope to do that. I have some some ideas maybe to do with the literary world. And, and you know, I think you have a great spot for possibly some type of festival in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, this is a place that just inspires ideas. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, um, um, with time, once we get settled, I can dig in. I think that's the problem, though, that's isn't it? <laughs> that's the problem. We, <laughs> yeah, we've too come, many ideas. We've come here, and, and my brain is, I can't sleep sometimes at night because my brain is ticking over, Vicky, where, oh, I've got this idea, I've got that idea. I mean, you know, I, I've got the music, and I want to bring some festivals here and work with the town uh, as, you know, something I want to do. And, you know, I'm looking at doing a radio show and mm -hmm. bringing that to town. and. Uh, you know, both of us are so creative. It's it's uh, it's can be 
a bit of a burden sometimes because you can't you can't just sit back and relax because your your brain's ticking over. But this town already has given given me personally, I don't know, it's given you some some headaches in a good way yes. because I can see some fantastic concepts that could could happen here and uh, and I want to be part of that and I'm hoping I'm hoping with my my shows you know the the locals will come out and support if they can to come and s see my music and I hope they enjoy it too and and you know you've got your amazing ideas with the books and and some others. And we right? talked yeah. about a TV show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We'll keep you posted on that. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I do find here that people are not only supportive, but mm -hmm. so willing to collaborate. And yes. if you are launching a festival, there aren't that many people that you have to get on board to make something happen. And it's amazing what you can pull off here. Absolutely, yeah. And I've found that where back in Ontario, it's very hard. Like, people will listen to you, but it never happens. Yeah. And it's so saturated. It's but just a saturated, it's a much it larger is. population. And I think that's the nature of the beast, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I mean, look at James Mulliger. He's, he's brought some great ideas. And James is a phenomenal comedian. Yes, and, and writer. And writer, and with these magazine as well, edit. And um, what I like about James, like James and I, have actually, we've spoke a lot, but we haven't actually met yet. Okay. But we've spoke a lot, and that's coming soon. But look what James has done, and he sees the beauty in, in New Brunswick and St. John, and he loves St. Andrews. And, you know, I take my uh, cap off to him for everything he's done, mm -hmm. and he's become quite the ambassador as well. But it proves that, you know, it proves that you can, uh, you can achieve your goals here. Did you reach out to him just from knowing you were moving to New Brunswick? I actually, uh, a friend of Kim Legg, she's a real estate lady that actually gave me the shout out and said, you, uh, have you heard of James Mullinger? I, I got to admit, I said no at the time, but when I'd done some research, I realized back what he'd done in England with the Q magazine and interviewed all the big stars. And then I sort of clicked. Um, but James and I, yeah, I, I met him on the internet, so I'm hoping he's as nice in person than <laughs> what they see on the internet. No, those jokes, sorry. I mean, because they're never the same, right? But no, James, James is, uh, is a fantastic, and, he's, and his wife have done so much for the community as well. So. And, and he's helped too with Winter Tickle Press. Yeah. He, he re has read and reviewed several of our books long yeah. before we moved here and mm -hmm. put it out on his Instagram following is quite large. And, and he's, he even went to, was it the East Point Mall Indigo in St. John? And he found <laughs> the book and took a picture of him holding it. And I thought, you know, that's really something. He didn't have to do it. No. And I mean, I think that's the spirit of New Brunswick in mm -hmm. general. They just take care of each other. Like that's, they don't need to talk about it. They don't need to announce it. It's just innate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about um, your press company? Um, what do you sure. publish? What kind of books? So Winter Tickle Press was founded in 2000, so we've been around for 21 years, but it, it actually has um, Atlantic Canada roots. Winter Tickle is the name of a pond in northern Newfoundland. So my grandfather, who had passed away by the time I was born, was um, the, the mailman for the small coves where he resided. And in the winter, you couldn't, there were no roads. And so he would have to go via dog sled to get the mail to bring back to the cove. And sometimes the weather was bad and you would have to stay overnight. And he would, had a little spot to stay at Winter Tickle Pond. And it's still there. And you know, when we went there and visited as kids, we would swim in the pond. And it was just kind of a neat place. A tickle in Newfoundland is, is water between two land masses. So, uh, and it's a very deep pond and it's very cold. So I imagine that's how it got its name winter tickle. And I just thought it was unusual. And so when I, uh, I was a teacher in uh, my early days, and then when I started writing professionally, eventually I kind of um, got into the publishing side of it. And then I thought, you know, a great name to, that's kind of a salute to my roots and Atlantic Canada would be Winter Tickle Press. So that's where it kind of came from. And, and we started out as solely an educational publishing company. But over the years, um, I got hooked up with uh, Neil Crone, who is a Canadian actor. He's in a lot of Hallmark movies and he's in a lot of advertisements. He's been a mainstay through the years. He was on a show called Little Mosque on the Prairie. Um, he had a collection of works that I started, I published for him, and that kind of put us more into the general trade market in 2013. And since then, our focus has been mainly either inspirational or mental health, a lot of memoirs. Um, it has to be Canadian and it has to have a purpose, so that's our mandate. And that's yeah. what we've been doing. And hopefully now that we're, I'm out here, we'll have more Eastern representation mm -hmm. in our titles. 
We're about to throw to some of your music, John, but just tell us one last time about Coal Jack Cafe's grand opening. When is it? What can people expect? So I'm going to do a soft opening May 19th, cross my fingers. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to have a, a grand opening hopefully in June. And I'm going to try and invite uh, actually James Dan, if he's available, to open the store, for which I thought would be really nice. And um, so sometime in June, there should be the grand opening. But because by then, I will have everything everything in my stock should all be in and uh, everything will be re really ready to go so I'm excited about that and I just hope everybody comes down like I said for a chat and see the product and and uh, see what I'm offering so mm -hmm. it'd be, be really great well thank you both for being here today it's thank so great you. to meet you in person yeah, thank you, you too Vicky. Right. thank you so much and here is music from John Fraser as I think it's Cole Jack that we're playing or is it the Englishman uh, this is more like a big cold jacket. Cold jacket. So, all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs>